Good morning and welcome. As you can see, we're a little bit disorganized up here. Uh, that's because we have the play going on last night, tonight, and tomorrow night. So everybody who hasn't seen it, come on down and see it. And uh, I'll give you a few announcements. It's a healing prayer Sunday today. So we'll be having the healing ministers up here uh, towards the end of the service and doing the blessings. So we won't have announcements at the end of the service. But for those of you who come to movie night, there won't be movie night for the next couple of weeks because they fall on Christmas Day and New Year's Day. So rather pointless. And uh, hmm, what else should I be announcing? Oh, Christmas Eve service incorporates the play, but it will be a worship service with the play in the middle of it. Christmas morning service at 10 a.m. And then the next worship service will be on the 30th. And thank you for cleaning everything, Lori. It looks good. And other than that, I think we're good to go. So if you please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbors with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Micah, chapter 5. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 80, and we'll receive, re, read it responsively, uh, verse by verse. I'll read the first verse, you read the second. So, Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You are a throne, Lord, and shine on the Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Restore us, O God. Lord God of hosts, you have fed them with the bread of tears. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors. 
Restore us, O God of hosts. Together. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from Hebrews chapter 10. When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, Behold, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And by that, we will, have, we will have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, Alan Kurtz will be doing the gospel reading and the sermon today. So. Uh, the gospel is Luke 1, 39 to 45. In those days, Mary rose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to visit me? For behold, the sound of your greeting came to my ears. The baby in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from our Lord. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Amen. to you, o Christ. And you may be seated, I guess. Just a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being a, such a gracious God and for sending, sending us a Messiah born in a stable based on our needs. Thank you, Lord, for your love and graciousness. And bless me now as I speak your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, am I coming through here? Okay? So, two more sleeps till Christmas. Kids are excited about what they're going to get. Parents are anticipating the happiness that they will see in their kids' faces on Christmas morning. And we hope our kids will learn that there is more joy in giving than in receiving. Christmas is a festival that really does bring joy and happiness to people. It's not just the presents. It's also the tradition of family reuniting and associating with kin. It really does also bring a sense of cheer among uh, even strangers as we really do seem to smile more, more at each other during these couple of weeks than we do the other 52 weeks of the year. In fact, the way Christmas is done is so enjoyable that uh, it is celebrated by everyone in the Christian world or the Western world, even by those who aren't Christians, even though they don't want to acknowledge Christ, Christian or not, Virtually every country in the world uh, it, uh, celebrates Christmas at this time. Even the enemies of the cross attempt to capture some of the happiness for themselves and their families. The common thought is that Christmas is for the kids. And so there's special television shows 
uh, geared for kids, special movies, dramas and plays, decorations, and of course, toys. I'm sure there is little doubt that God smiles too when he sees us smiling and laughing, eating and playing together. It is true that some want to obscure the true meaning of Christmas, and it is right that Christians want to protect the true meaning of Christmas. I think it can be truthfully said that those who really appreciate Christmas the most are those who truly understand its origin and truly can, be, can most appreciate the significance of that birth some 2,000 years ago. Yes, a baby was born in a barn because there was nowhere else for them to go for privacy. That boy was laid in a feeding trough. It wasn't sterilized. The baby boy was wrapped and laid on a layer of dusty hay. And Mary and Joseph finally managed to fall asleep in those early morning hours, exhausted from the trip. When they fell asleep, they fell asleep to the smell of hay, straw, and manure. That's the birth we celebrate at Christmas. But why? Each of the four Gospels give us information concerning this birth and what made it so important. The lessons for today, we see clear teaching and on why the birth and, the, and why this birth happened, which really did happen at a real time in a real place in history, and it was significant. In Psalm 80, in verse 7, we read, Restore us, O God, O host, let your face shine that we may be saved. The word restore us signifies that there was a falling away. That means there must have been a time before there was a falling away. The word save indicates that the falling away had serious consequences, which we need to be saved from. In Hebrews 5, we read, sacrifice and offering you have not desired. Sacrifices and offerings are attempts by us to redeem the fallen condition. But the you have not desired part points out that we remain in this fallen away condition in spite of our efforts, that we fail. How long ago did, uh, did we fall into this condition? How long ago have we been in this fallen away state? Well, it is recorded for us in Genesis chapter 3, right at the beginning. Well, it happened when Adam and Eve chose to take leadership from Satan instead of from God. You see, God said that we could eat from all the fruit of the garden. There was plenty in abundance for you. There was plenty in variety for you. It was always fresh for you. It was always healthy for you. You could eat it raw. You could bake it. You could roast it. It was all, have all you want. It was in great abundance for you. All you could ever want. But he said, there's one tree in the middle of the garden that is very unhealthy for you. Don't eat of it or you will die. It was a warning. But guess what Adam and Eve didn't do when Satan tempted them to eat of that fruit? They didn't believe God. They didn't obey God. The reality is that at that moment, they committed treason and was legally binding that meant that Adam and Eve gave their loyalty to Satan. And from then on, all their offspring have been under the rule of Satan, whose only purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. You and I have nothing to say about it, just like we have no choice about who our parents are. We have no choice in the country we're born in or the government who rules us. But in Genesis chapter 3, God showed his great love for Adam and Eve and for all their descendants, including you and me, 
and that even while Adam and Eve stood there in their shame and guilt without excuse, naked except for a few fig leaves, they knew they were guilty, they were exposed, guilty as charged. They had no alibi. What were they going to do? They had no idea how to make it right, just like me and all of us. So God took the initiative, and in that condition there, he took the initiative and promised to send a champion, a champion that would crush Satan's head. That head crusher would be one of their own descendants. This champion would liberate all of us from that cruel foreign dictator, Satan. Over the next 4,000 years, God had his prophets record some over 300 different clues and predictions called prophecies that would identify that one who would be the head crusher. The Jews in his day were very serious about studying these ancient writings. They were in fact uh, very, uh, there was a consensus among all the Jews at that time uh, that those ancient writings indicated that the time for this head crusher to appear was eminent. They referred to the head crusher as the Messiah. It is interesting that every single one of those prophecies are fulfilled in that baby boy that was born in a barn that first Christmas night. The ancient writings explain that this Messiah would be God's son, and yet being of the noblest and most royalty of all royals would be born in a humble birth like a stable. These ancient writings included the predictions that he would be born of a virgin, that he would be born in Bethlehem, that he would be raised in Galilee, that he would perform miracles including uh, healing the lame and the blind. It even predicted that he would die on a cross as a criminal. All 300 prophecies were fulfilled in that one baby boy, including the prophecies that predicted that Jesus would not be recognized by the Jews. So we should celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas. It is the Messiah's birthday. But really, it is not Jesus' birth that is the best part of his coming. It was how he restored us while we were yet fallen away. And that is why we celebrate Easter. The birth would not have happened if it had not been necessary, if Easter had not been necessary. Those who don't acknowledge their need for a Messiah can only celebrate Santa, sleigh bells, snow, happy holidays, and a holiday tree. Those of us who understand our helpless condition of being born under the rule of Satan and believe in the restoring power of the cross at Easter, we are the only ones who can truly rejoice at the birth of this baby boy in a barn, wrapped in cloths and laying on hay in a manger. This is the birth of our Messiah, who we celebrate at Easter for taking the rap for us. This baby boy in the barn is the Son of God who went on to pay the ransom that liberates us from the condition we were born under. So just as we had nothing to do with who our parents are or the country of our birth, we now have nothing to do with being the children of God. We are now citizens of heaven. This is the gift from God to us through his son. We celebrate this baby in the manger because he crushed Satan's head and gave us salvation as a gift. There is no effort required on our part. There is nothing that we can do to add to it. We receive this gift by grace through faith and it is made available to us through the sacraments of baptism and communion. We who believe he is the Messiah are now unconditionally accepted into God's kingdom. And we can have all the abundance, we can have all the variety and the freshness and the health and the freedom 
that God intended us for us from the very beginning, from, from now until eternity, because of this baby boy who was born in a stable that we're going to celebrate in just a few days. Amen. And now I'm going to uh, do a song for you. Kind of fits with all that. Check, check, good. Check one, two. Is that coming through? Yep. Yep. <clears throat>
Thank you very much, Alan. Please rise as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we praise you that by your Holy Spirit, Elizabeth greeted Mary as the mother of my Lord, while the unborn John leapt for joy in the presence of your son in Mary's womb. Increase in us your spirit, that our faith may bear fruit in abundance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we praise you that from the, their conception, you prepared the prophets to proclaim your truth. Even so, we pray that you would prepare servants of the word today to preach your saving gospel with faithfulness and power. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Almighty God, we praise you that by your kind providence, you create new life. Preserve all pregnant women and the children in their wombs. Bring to repentance all who would take the lives of the unborn and foster the work of crisis pregnancy centers and others who aid and encourage women to keep their babies. Remember in mercy all who serve in public office in our land, granting them wisdom, courage, and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God, we praise you that you are father to the fatherless and that you provide for the poor when all others have forgotten them. Graciously watch over the hungry, the poor, the unemployed. Move us to serve you in showing mercy to all those in need far and near. Comfort the grieving, heal the sick, grant faith to the dying. We pray especially for all those who come forward for healing prayers this morning. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
So now is a time for prayers and healing intercessions. Uh, the prayer team could come forward. Lord Jesus, we ask that you guard, strengthen, and act through these, your ministers, as they bring healing and intercession for your people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord Jesus healed many as a sign of the reign of God come near, and sent the disciples to continue this work of healing, with prayer, the laying on of hands, and anointing. In the name of Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we now entrust to God all who are in need of healing. Lord our God, we are in need of your healing. Our minds and bodies are afflicted. You said to Israel, I am your healer, and Israel was restored. I invite you to come now for individual blessing, anointing, healing, and prayer. Uh, the prayer team will be off to the side. Anybody who wishes to come forward just for a blessing, we won't have communion this morning, of course, but uh, for a blessing and then off to the prayer team for individual prayer for particular problems. <laughs>
healing and comfort and strengthen your body. I bring you comfort in body.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is Once in Royal David's City, and I believe we're waiting for the organ to kick in. <laughs> I like this song. Go in peace, serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God.